Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there Astro Ventures, welcome back. If you're new to this Astrophotography channel, my name is George and this is the Astrophotography channel for DSLR or mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skyguider Pro or the Star Adventure. Now I'm here in my local dark sky park and I am doing this video at the request of one of our viewers, Rachel, who is traveling here to Utah to some beautiful dark skies. And she is just getting started with the Skyguider Pro and an iPolar, and she's trying to figure this all out. And I was gonna be out here with the New Moon crew anyway, so I decided to do a quick impromptu video. So Rachel, this one's for you, and I hope that you have the most incredible dark skies down there. So let's get started here. Uh, first thing, as a standard, you're gonna come out here and you're going to place your tripod facing to the North Star. And to do this, I will then get down, look across the top of my base. In this case, it's the William Optics base. And I'm going to do a rough alignment to the star Polaris. Once I have that in place, I'm gonna check my level. And I have already dialed this into place. My level is looking good. And then I would check one more time to make sure that I am good. Okay. So I have the tripod set up, base is pointed off towards the star Polaris. I'm now going to get my Skyguider Pro and I am going to mount this up. Now, you want to have practiced this a number of times because normally you're going to be working in the dark. Uh, myself, I've got this light on for the purpose of recording, but I would be doing this in the dark. Now, one of the things is, is that I don't let go of this thing until I make sure that I'm good because you don't want to let go and have your equipment hit the ground. The Skyguider Pro is now mounted to the William Optics base. I will go ahead and pull the cap off. I'm going to grab my bracket here and mount that up to the Skyguider Pro. And I will now move to my computer and specifically using the software for the iPolar so that I can dial in my alignment onto Polaris. So we'll power this up. And while that is powering up, I will grab my cable and I will plug that into the Skyguider Pro, specifically into the iPolar camera. Now, once I have that plugged in, I will plug the iPolar camera cable into the computer and I will bring up the iPolar software. Now, when I bring up this iPolar software, it's going to need me to put in some information. So one of the things that you need to have on your, uh, on your smartphone, and I recommend having this in place before you head out into some remote location where you're unable to download an app, you're gonna to need to have some type of an app that you can get your latitude, longitude off of. And you can also use a uh, GPS, but some source of being able to give you that information. So, to come around here, so with the iPolar software fired up here, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to, I turned on the connect, and you can see this red crosshair has shown up. Now, one of the challenges that I'm running into tonight in shooting this tutorial, because I wanna get it out for our viewer who has this awesome trip coming up, is I'm actually clouded over. So for part of this, I will actually have to do some Photoshop simulating on this. Okay, but let's move forward. So you see this crosshair that is here. I've got the camera, cable connected, the iPolar camera cable connected to the laptop, I'm gonna go into settings. Here in the settings, I'm going to hit change. And up here, you'll see the latitude and longitude. And I need to plug in the latitude and longitude for my location. 
Next down here, I'm going to need to put in the temperature. The temperature is in Celsius. Um, if you have cellular service, you can always get it. However, I tend to bring a thermometer with me to remote locations. And then I have an app for doing the conversion to get from Fahrenheit over to Celsius. And I will plug that in. Uh, next, you can plug in the barometric pressure. I generally never do. Uh, you know, If you do, you're going to be that much more accurate. Okay. Once that is all plugged in, latitude, longitude, your temperature, um, barometric pressure, if you decide to add it, you will then click confirm. Okay. Once that is in, it's locked in, you may be able to see this area has went to gray, so it's no longer editable. I will now come down here to take dark frame. Now, the take dark frame, you're going to click this. It's going to bring up a window that says, please cover your camera, press OK when you are ready. Now, originally you saw that I had taken the cap off of my eye polar. That was for doing the initial rough alignment. So generally I'll actually just place my hand over that camera and with my hand over it, I'll click OK. It tells me that the dark frame has been taken, uncover my camera and I click OK. I am all set up within the settings now. I can now close out this window. So here I have my crosshair and you will see this red ball, which I am simulating in Photoshop due to the cloud cover that hopefully will clear. And I will start dialing in left, right. And for the purpose of this, pretend as though my cursor is actually Polaris. So I would end up dialing it over until I've lined it up with my crosshair and then I would push it up until I get to the crosshair. Now I've stopped at this point. Reason being is, and one of the beauties of this software is as you get Polaris close to the crosshair, what's going to happen is this will now magnify and that crosshair will be nice and large on the screen. And it makes it really easy to get a beautiful alignment. And I will move the North Star Polaris into that crosshair. Once you're all set there, you now have alignment. So we'll stand back up and finish setting up up top. Okay, now that I have the eye polar dialed into, into and onto the star Polaris, we're gonna finish setting up the rest of the equipment. So next, I'm going to grab my counterweight. And the way that I like to do this is to loosen up the screw on the weight and then put it into the bracket. And I actually hold the weight to keep the weight off of this as I screw in the shaft to this bracket. Once that is in there, I will move the weight all the way up because I don't have any weight on the opposite side. So that's now in place. Next, I'm going to need to mount my camera. And so now I will reach off to the side and grab it from my buddy of the New Moon crew, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Okay, so I have the camera. On the bottom, I have the mount that mounts to this bracket, and I will go ahead and place the camera onto the mount. Now, as I had mentioned earlier about making sure that you do not let go of anything until you are sure that it is on there, um, <laughs> The reason why I bring this up again is this bracket that you mount onto the Sky Guider Pro, it's really easy to have this slightly off and it doesn't securely mount. So I make sure before I let go of anything that I have that soundly locked into place. Okay, so the counterweight's on, camera's sitting up top. We've done that initial dial in. What I now need to do is adjust my weight, okay? Now, the way that I want this is I want the camera to, or excuse me, I want the weight to be east heavy. Um, some people like to have a neutral balance. I prefer slightly east heavy. The reason being is, is that the mechanism inside that is going to be moving this assembly, uh, potentially as weight shifts through the night, you could potentially have a little bit of slop where if I have it slightly east heavy, it will keep the gearing inside against the teeth as it rotates through the night. And I'll just keep moving this until I have a slight pull down 
on the eastern side. Okay, almost there. Now, if for some reason you have a setup, and keep in mind the Sky Guider Pro, right now I'm at neutral balance, the Sky Guider Pro has a maximum weight limit of 11 pounds. Um, depending on your setup though, and I have a slight east heavy, there's a slight rotation. Okay, perfect. Um, if you find that you can't get that east heavy, William Optics, excuse me, William Optics sells an extension rod that will screw into the end, and that way you can get the weight further out to counter the weight of your equipment setup. So that's from William Optics. I love their gear. I have no ties to them, but they make good, sound, solid, quality gear. Okay, so let's do a quick review. We had done the alignment on Polaris. Our tripod is level. We did the initial dial-in of getting Polaris lined up with the iPolar camera. We've put the weight on, we've put the camera on, we've got that slight east heavy balance to it now. And my next step is, and you may have seen this in a previous video, that when you shift this around to your target for the night, and I'm gonna loosen this up, do a quick bit of rotation, and we'll say that this is the point at which I am looking at my target. Now notice I am not letting go of anything until I make sure I have everything locked into place. That's because I don't want it to go crashing down. Okay, so here I am, I have the camera now rotated. I'm looking at the target that I want to photograph for the night. And this is the beauty of the Sky Guider Pro combined with the iPolar. And if you've seen this in another video, which we'll link to, the moment you rotate your assembly, you're going to get a weight shift. It's no longer sitting as it was. And if you'll join me here on the computer, you'll see what I'm talking about. Because down here after the weight shift, the North Star, again, this is simulated due to the cloud cover, uh, you'll notice that the North Star has actually shifted off of the crosshair. So with my entire setup in place, I will now make slight adjustments to the screws to dial Polaris back into the crosshair where I need it to be. To do this fine adjustment though, I do not actually release the primary levers for left, right adjustment and up, down. Because I'm making such a slight adjustment, I can actually make adjustments to the screws and it'll allow me to dial it in without making a major adjustment by releasing the primary levers. Okay, so we've redialed in onto the Star Polaris with our camera in the tracking location we want. And I apologize, I hadn't mentioned it earlier, the uh, Sky Guider Pro, I had actually turned that on so it is tracking after having got my target into location. So here I am, it's now tracking. It's in its location where it needs to be. I've done an alignment again with the Ioptron iPolar software, and it's good to go. Now, in my previous video where I had talked about using or making that adjustment to the Star Polaris after the rotation, what I like to do, and this is again one of the beauties of the Sky Guider Pro with the iPolar, is I will generally run for about 30 minutes and then every 30 minutes, I will come back over, power up the computer again, recheck my alignment, pause the, uh, the intervalometer, tweak it, dial it in, get it back onto the crosshair of the software, and then I resume, resume shooting. And I like to do that every 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, there are times where I've gone longer where my alignment has just been that spot on, but Again, the advantage is I can keep realigning and keeping my tracking the best that it can be, okay? And then just one last thing, and we'll be doing this in a future episode. Uh, another beauty to the Sky Guider Pro is that you can actually connect this to an ASI Air along with a guide scope, and you can do some tracking with this setup where it will make micro adjustments forward or back to keep the track star in place. Um, I wasn't sure how good it, 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 it was. I've tried it, I've used it, 
I love it, and we'll be doing that in the future. Okay, well, there you go. Rachel, I hope you have the best trip that you can have in uh, southern Utah. Enjoy our state. We've got some great and gorgeous skies down south, and I hope this helps anybody else with that SkyGuider Pro combined with the iPolar. And again, if you're considering where to go, that whole advantage of being able to tweak your adjustment every 30 minutes without having to reset to a 12 and 6 position for a reticle will really pay off. Okay, till next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights. <laughs> Star adventurer, hater. <laughs> hater. I am out here in my local deep sky. <laughs> I always call it that. It's a dark sky park. <laughs>